this Rust Belt, as they refer to it, is full of food dollars. When we look at how much is coming into this region, and we look at how much is being exported out of the region via corn and soybeans, we have to ask ourselves, why are we exporting so many tons of corn? Why are we exporting so many tons of soybeans to feed animals? that in return are shipped someplace else or shipped back here in a different form. How many, how many billions of dollars is being spent on exporting and then importing stuff back into Northern Ohio? I'd like to think about the economics of local food. I found the people like very organic foods and they are willing to uh, behave as the volunteers. It's wonderful. It's really cooperative. It's a community. I respect it. <laughs> I love it. And in the professional journals, like the Journal of the American Planning Association and Planning Magazine, you're beginning to see more and more articles talking about food, the need to provide people who are separated from fresh food with fresh food, and the resolution to the question, what to do with all the vacant land. And that's why I think urban agriculture is one thing that should be part of our thinking. Not necessarily in the rudimentary aspects that we have now, maybe with uh, greenhouses or variations on greenhouses, modern variations on greenhouses, maybe with some attention uh, devoted to canning and uh, preserving some of the produce, which after all is seasonal. So uh, those seem to be good things to think about. Yep. But once, a, once upon a time around here, we, you know, we had a um, really vibrant hothouse industry. Mm -hmm. They got shut down because they, you know, heated with soft brown coal and were polluting everything. And as soon as their energy prices went up, they couldn't compete and ended. And I've been following a 35-acre greenhouse in Maine. It's run by a Dutch corporate farmers, and they have replaced all of s tomato crops from southeast from southeast United States during the winter with hothouse tomatoes grown in Maine year-round. And they had a really interesting observation, which is it's cheaper to heat than it is to cool. And the problem they have with tomatoes is keeping them cool enough down south with the cost of the trucking and fuel costs going up and everything else. So they've done a really nice job with 35 acres of greenhouses. The only way I think you can grow the market is not going to is is essentially figuring out how to take the stuff to scale on the supply side, which means first, demonstrating the alternative markets exist and take the risk out of it for the farmer. Second, figuring out ways to extend the growing season, which to me means some sort of hothouse agriculture because you got to get people with incomes from April through November, early December. Climate change helps us there, by the way. Um, and figuring out an, alter an alternative way of heating it off the grid because you can't do it through electricity. We can't do it through soft brown coal. So I, to me, it looks like a combination of solar and fuel cell makes sense. Well, can we get to a large enough, what is the scale of the market you need to get scale economies to drive the delivery costs down? Luckily, right, we've got the best model of a world-class small digester sitting at OARDC in Worcester, that's essentially the Agricultural Research Station, and we've got a company um, in Mayfield that makes small fuel cells. Um, now, right now, they aren't cost competitive for this, but what type of scale do you need to bring them down to this? I would love to see Benson Lee, who runs TMI, be involved in serious conversations with the alternative farm community to put together demonstration, demonstration test kits. If you can make it work in Maine, you should be able to make it work here. So I think we do need to, you know, think beyond just the local food system, but starting to think how can we connect regions so that there is, is some kind of a flow. Um, certainly here in the north, um, you know, we can grow about six months out of the year. Um, so local food system would be not just about growing, but canning and preserving, and maybe forming some relationships with more southern states or regions to, you know, create that flow of, uh, of food. So, um, you know, I think it's important to look at the limitations of, you know, just entirely focusing on a local food system. 
Um, but I do think one of the most important things about local food systems and kind of orienting things in that way is that's how we begin to rebuild the strength of our whole food system as a nation or a whole food system as a, as a globe, um, is by beginning to uh, stitch back together that web of connections between the local environment and the community that, that lives there. I think the college has evolved a lot. You know, there's interest in local foods that goes back to 1988. Um, and some students did this whole study on the uh, co-op dining system, which is about 25% of the student body and then the institutional dining service. Um, in uh, 2000, uh, Bon Appetit, uh, which is a national uh, service management company, uh, took over the contract for uh, Oberlin College. And they have as a corporate philosophy this farm-to-fork idea. They want to source as much food as they can locally. It's something that they, uh, they have as a corporate policy, basically, for all their accounts across the country. Um, so when they came on board in 2000, there's very little uh, spending for, for local food. Um, last year, they got up to about $750,000 of spending from the dining halls that were going to uh, local farmers and local businesses. Um, if you add the student co-ops, that figures up to about $920,000. So, you know, it's within reach for Oberlin College. It's just one institution to be putting almost a million dollars into the local economy. Um, when you think about the $6.9 billion that residents of Northeast Ohio collectively spend, you begin to realize there's a huge economic opportunity here that's also good for the environment, keeps farmers on the land, uh, connects us more as communities. You know, what's there that's not good about this, this system?